So we had like the 2008 collapse, three banks that were collectively 11 times the GDP of Iceland just crashed in a matter of weeks. Uh, there was a lot of anger in the society, uh, obviously. These banks had all been like, very recently privatized, so that like, is kind of like a 98, 2002 privatized, <laughs> and then just like six years later, a yeah, complete collapse. Um, so, uh, like, in terms of like, talking about the protest, there was this singer, folk singer, who kind of uh, went out and uh, had this one man protest basically. He just went like, with his guitar and open mic and said, like, I'm going to shout at the parliamentary building until they leave. And then, like, a collective kind of uh, merged like, around him and they started organizing weekly meetings that were, uh, went on for like, four months or something. Uh, and he, so, but like the, in terms of like now, after we've had like Occupy and stuff like that, like we have this kind of, in uh, comparison, this was like a very like top down kind of structure, it's like they, like they just formed, just like they were the voice of the people, and they kind of uh, organized the protest in this like, there's two speakers every time, and, uh, and they had like a very clear cut uh, notion of like how we, how, uh, like, we achieve the goals of the of the revolution, like of the government and the support of the central bank and so forth. Um, as far as like organization of the protest, because they all asked me about that as well, uh, that was like kind of the extent of it, except for like a couple of activist groups that kind of were like active and would like follow what the police was doing and like bar exits and stuff like that kind of make the uh, protests more effective. Um, so this is like the mobilization factor here is just like the anchor towards the fall of the, bank, fall of the banks and uh, this feeling that this was all caused by like a mixture of arrogance, ignorance, incompetence and corruption. Um, so um, the government resigned in, in January uh, 26th. And we had like a minority coalition that kind of would work for a couple of months and then elections in the, in the spring of like, April. Um, what was the question posed to me like, at, at the beginning? I oh, completely lost it. Uh, the question here is if you can go uh, briefly through the methodologies yeah. of uh, the protest. Of the protest, yeah. Yes. So this kind of here is... And kind also of to break some stereotypes, you know, break, about break the people the there, yeah. about the, you, you know, the hom homogeneous group of people who yeah. are doing the, this and this and this, uh, and about violence. Yeah, okay. so, so this here is like in, in uh, we were like quite lucky that in, in, just like two weeks ago, there was like the, a police report was released uh, about the protests from like, from 2007 until today. Um, and like the, it's written by a police commissioner, it's called Gerion, and it's been like called by the media, it's like Gerion's Stasi report, because he was like, they were like actively targeting individuals according to their like political um, uh, position. And it's like the, I don't know, like the scale of violence uh, in terms of like here, for example, but like in Iceland, they, this was like unprecedented in terms of like there was like an active group pressuring against the police. The police would use clubs, uh, mace, and tear gas, and like it's the first use of tear gas since 1949 in Iceland. So like, you, and, and like this is like a society with like the police are normally not armed in Iceland. They, they um, apparently until now because like. Three weeks ago, we got news that they are. Yeah, it's like they got like we got. Yeah, it's like three weeks ago we got like news that they were getting like uh, MP5s, like actual and cock guns, uh, from the Norwegian army. So oh, that's me. Um, so, but like the violence uh, was like on the front, but it's like very important for the protests uh, to be effective. As uh, like for me at least, like what. There was this kind of duality in that, like, it was both seen as non-violent in Iceland and as violent. So, like, you'd be having these discussions with people, and they're going, like, no, we shouldn't harm the police. Why are you, those police, poor policemen, why are you being so aggressive against them and stuff like that? 
And so then the media would kind of grab this kind of, like, one policeman got hit by a rock and like is now in the hospital kind of stuff. Um, but like the general perception of the protest in Iceland was still that it was uh, non-violent. And I think this was like a very important factor in like mobilizing a large group of people. Because like in, when it was the most populous, it was something like 10,000 people arriving, which is, I would say, say pretty impressive for a population of 300,000. So kind of get 10,000 people at one spot and kind of just shout and be angry. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think, like, it, given the history of Iceland and like the complete, like, ache, the ability of the politicians to kind of ignore uh, protests and kind of uh, complaints about how they run things, I think if like it, if it hadn't been like aggressive in the way it was, in the way that like there was this kind of throwing stuff at the police and. Uh, and like food and stuff, but like, and also like the, there was this like strong movement that was like throwing rocks at them. But that that okay was like met by a group of protesters that formed a barricade. So like we like that was not like approved by the general uh, public. I think that like, like genuinely aiming to harm the police officers was not like acceptable behavior. Um, and we had like a group of people that managed to break into the parliamentary building and. And get into the, the public gallery and kind of shout at the people. And we like the, we know for a fact that like the, the parliamentary members they were like afraid of their lives at some point uh, during the protests. And I think this was very. And yeah, we had a bonfire. We like cut down like a Christmas tree, like donated by Oslo, <laughs> and like it was like a huge bonfire outside the parliamentary building. And um, I think this kind of open aggression and, uh, and kind of kind of destructive force was very important in kind of getting uh, the the powers uh, that like the political powers away from Parliament and like opening the option for them to step down because this is the first time a government has stepped down before like their uh, term is ended in the history of Iceland and we had like the first left-wing government, um, but I think like if we, uh, and then there's like this, like there, like the hooliganization, hooliganization of the protesters, like a part of the protesters was very important, I think, like I, got, I was really negative about it at the time, it was like, it's like I'm not a criminal or whatever, you know, we're doing the right thing here, uh, but now I can see like if it weren't for the hooliganization of this part of the uh, of the part of the group, the rest of the like larger group of the protesters wouldn't have been able to kind of distance themselves from the uh, like violent so-called protesters, and wouldn't have like created this kind of large scale movement. Um, I think that should like do it. I think for the protests themselves, and I think what like would you? You can uh, proceed with what you wanted to say also about you know. Um, Today's situation. I, I, I think maybe like I only have what have how much do I have left? Five, Five minutes. Okay. Yes. Good. I'll just skip everything uh, <laughs> and go to the end. So, and I think because like in, in terms of just talking about protests and effectivity and stuff like that, I think what happened, and I think this is something that's really important. That's like a global kind of thing. Is that like. Prior to 2008, Iceland just wouldn't protest. It's like you'd have this kind of protest that were like a hundred people would be angry about something, like a specific issue or something like that. But there is like I've been reading David Graeber, like of the Article Movement, and he's talking about this revolution of common sense. It's like this kind of this like uh, uh, protests, for example, becoming this kind of living option for people. And I think that's something that's happened in Iceland in a very important sense. So like even like I can't go into like how uh, uh, we've got like this uh, populistic right-wing government right now that kind of got into power last year that have been doing insane amounts of like comically evil things. Um, uh, but like in like prior to 2008, they could have done all these things and we would have just like ignored it or like oh. 
damn government kind of situation. But now there have been, like there were protests last year, there were protests this uh, spring, which are quite popular, so it's like three, four, five thousand people have attended, I mean, like eight meetings or something. That was like, they were quite successfully ignored by the politicians. And now there's like a movement now, and it's like, that started last week, um, it's like a Monday, where we managed to get uh, somewhere in the excess of 5,000 people with kind of aggressive, loud noise kind of uh, protests. Um, and, and I can see now like a development. So like in 2008 you had this kind of top-down organization of the, of, the, uh, of the protest where you had Miguel Torreson, which is uh, the like, kind of head of the protests and everything like kind of organized around him and they kind of said like you should do this and that blah 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 whereas in in today like the uh, so like my association association was approached by the organizers of the organizers of the movement now to get this kind of occupy this horizontal kind of organization trying to make like a collective assembly or something like that to kind of discuss uh, how we can uh, focus the kind of the, the positive energy of the protest to really push some the politicians in a more concrete, effective way than just like shouting, get the fuck out. <laughs>